Okay, guys, so I decided to do my Spanish mac and cheese first because that way I can throw it in the oven and we can get right to those sandwiches. I like this to cook first. All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to do the flip side. I'm going to show you everything that I have here on my station. And um, we're going to get doing this and putting this loveliness together. All right, so I'm going to sit you right here. I'm going to do this switch side here so you're able to see me. <laughs> okay. So, I have that block of cheese. The first thing I do is um, I add the cheese on the bottom. I like to have cheese layered on the bottom very beautifully. So, it gets that extra nice cheesiness to it, right? All right, so we're going to go ahead and cut this baby open. And I don't know about y'all, but I love cheese. <laughs> Who doesn't like cheese, right? And they come in beautiful slices. And lovely slices. That movie's really good, by the way. Um, like I said, I watched it before. It's with Mary J. Blas. I just can't think of the movie's name. <laughs> Let me turn it down here for a quick second. Sorry about that. All right. So like I was saying, I'm actually going to pause it so I don't miss it. All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> okay. All right. I should have did that first. All right. Okay. I just want to quick tell you before I add in the cheeses at the bottom and I show you how I do everything. Okay. I wanted to show you my pasta very quickly. I always drain some of the water, but I keep some of the pasta water inside the pasta when I do this because this bad boy is going in the oven. So we want to make sure that we leave that extra starch into the pasta, into that elbow macaroni. Um, this way it gives it a better texture to the um, pasta itself and to the cheeses and all the ingredients that sink into this dish. And that's one of my tricks that I do. All right, so we're going to get right to the plate, the pan. And um, I already have my mini microwave set up real nice and hot for my pan to go in. All right. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, and I put lots of cheese into my um, mac and cheese or any kind of lasagna. If you look at all my videos, you'll see that I am a cheese person. I do add lots of it because it's one of the key ingredients, I think, you should always have in a lasagna and other uh, cheesy dishes, right? I've done lots of pasta dishes out there on my YouTube channel, so please check me out when you have the time. I know I know. since the COVID, I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, things at home, and I, I get to binge watch my shows, which I was never a binge watcher, by the way, but since this COVID, oh my God, it's like binge watching everything. Um, you know, not that I have time like that, but there's days that I, you know, I'll just completely relax. The days that I don't cook and I'll just, you know, kick back in my room and enjoy my, my time with my kiddos. All right, guys. Okay. So you see, I layered it completely, very beautifully with all those cheeses. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to add in some of that uh, base. Now, remember, use the base sofrito. The tomato base sofrito, okay? Don't use the other kind because it's not going to taste as, like, as good. So I just put some of that on top, and you're doing a one-third of a half a cup of this. I'm sorry. So that's going to be half and half as I layer. All right, we're going to go ahead for that badilla as well. Remember, we're doing a one-third, but we're splitting that word one-third into this dish, okay? And we're going to do one packet of that salsa. So we're only doing two layers here, okay? Now let's get to that beautiful, beautiful, I'm gonna move this back here, to that Colombia pasta. And you can use any pasta, any macro, you know, elbow macaroni uh, pasta, it doesn't matter, but I do like this one, this one's really good. You can tell the difference in a lot of pastas once you start tasting them all. And like I said, leave some of that pasta water in there. It does make a difference. Trust me when I tell you. All right. Let's say one more scoop. All right. Then we go ahead and we add in our cheeses again. Same thing. Layer that bad boy up with those cheeses. Ooh. 
make sure you spread the love inside the pan. You know, you make it even, just like you would do lasagna. Yeah, and this is some good stuff, guys, you know. And like I said, my daddy brings me a lot of stuff, you know. So I try to make sure that I use everything in my kitchen. And tomorrow is my grocery day, so I want to make sure I use up a lot of this cheese because I'm going to need room in my refrigerator for my other stuff that I buy <laughs> at the grocery store. All right, and you want to make sure you fill it up really nice. Okay, so here we go again. We're going to just add the rest of the, the tomato base sofrito. So delicious. Oh, my God, it smells so good. Add that packet of salsong. The other pack. Oops. Wrong pack. And trust me, this is to die for. Something so simple in your kitchen with so much flavor. Okay, and Goya, Goya ingredients, let me tell you, our, our Latin ingredients, our Goya, Goya Spanish ingredients are so flavorful, especially like our sofrito. That's one of the main things a lot of us Latin women use. So don't be scared to like switch one of your ingredients that you're used to using and throw in a Goya ingredient. Have some fun in your kitchen. <laughs> Try different stuff, different flavors. All right, because I, I don't just use Goya ingredients. I use all kinds of stuff. But my main ingredient, yes, is my Goya. All right, you're going to see all that water from the pasta coming in there too. That's what I want. And you're going to add another layer of cheese, okay, on top. All right, yeah, like I said, this is getting a lot of cheese in it. Only because I have the extra cheese. Usually, I'll just keep it to a minimum with the cheese. But since I do have a lot of cheese, I'm going to go ahead and make it real cheesy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because um, pasta, when you put it in the oven, it kind of blows up like the noodles. And so, trust me, it's not going to hurt if you add some extra cheese. It's going to go very well no matter what. All right, so there you have it. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my parsley and my parsley flakes and just to give it a nice garnish so when it starts um, roasting up in the oven and melting it has that nice funky look to it all right and there you have it all right so we're gonna go ahead and grab this and i'm gonna show you and let's look at the bottom everything i do right in front of you perfect spanish mac and cheese i'm telling you to die for all right, so I'm going in my mini oven right now, and I'm just putting this in my mini oven so this way it can cook to perfection. And I will show you that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> All right, there you have it, right there in my mini oven. And uh, my mini oven doesn't have no light back there, so sorry about that. And we're just gonna throw that in for about 20, 25 minutes, and that bad boy is done. All right, so we're gonna I'm gonna wrap this up clean my area and then we're gonna get right to making that beautiful cold sauce for our sandwiches and putting them sandwiches together before this stuff is done. All right, something simple. All this is done like in uh, 40 minutes tops. All right.